in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare I am protected in the name of Jesus. My family is protected in the name of Jesus. Every member of our church are protected in the name of Jesus. You are protected. I decree and declare over you. The protection of God is upon you in the name of Jesus. You will not be victim of sickness. You will not be victim of diseases. You will not be victim of, of, of death in the name of Jesus. No weapon come your dwelling shall harm you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over you that is that the angels of God surround your dwelling in the name of Jesus. Your children are protected. Your homes are protected in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that rises against you, I decree shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Because you are the Lord, you will shine from God in the name of Jesus. Isaiah, the Bible says, Arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I decree over you. The glory of God shall repeat all around you in the name of Jesus. Speak it over yourself, speak it over your children, that the glory of the Lord shall repeat upon us in the name of Jesus. We are covered in the Shekinah glory of God. We are covered in the Shekinah glory of God in the name of Jesus. Every eye that shall be open shall see the glory of God. Every eye that shall be open and see the manifestation of God's presence in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we are of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is sufficient for us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. And then I want us to pray and say, Father, Father, I engage you to work on my behalf. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I engage you to work on my behalf. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Living God, guide my life. The Spirit of the Living God. Direct my family, direct the path of my family, direct the life of my family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my God, I the Holy Spirit, they will not go astray under your watch in the name of Jesus. They will be sensitive to your instruction, they will be sensitive to your leading in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's serve your holy name in Jesus Christ's name. We are free. I'm going to pray that Lord. In this coming three days fasting and prayer, you shall renew our strength in the name of Jesus. We will not fall sick in the name of Jesus. We will be like an eagle who will swear so hard in the name of Jesus. This three days shall be a moment of refreshing, shall be a moment of encounter in the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we have to pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time for us to say thank you to Jesus with our substance. But before we do that, I want us to look at this common scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verse 38. Matthew chapter 11, verse 38. He says, you know, let's, let's take a moment to open it. I know we all know it. But Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. If you are there, say amen. Matthew 11, 28. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I'm reading in the NIV, and I will give you rest. I will say this again, Matthew 11, 28. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. And we know that God cannot lie. This is Jesus speaking. And we know we need to let God know that He is our resting place. We need to let God know that without Him, everything will be chaos. Just looking at the news these days is enough to give us worry and make us to be burdened. You see, this past week I was in a very terrible place, but I found rest in God. I don't know how this past week has gone for you. I don't know what your challenging times have been, but God has given you rest. The fact that you are here this evening means that God has given you rest emotionally, physically, financially, any way possible. God is our resting place. And this song just resonates with me so much right now. He says, oh, 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 my rest has come. Oh, 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 oh. my rest 
Uh, God will teach you something new that will take you for this week, for this month, and throughout the rest part of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I will share with us in, uh, in the last couple of, um, uh, okay, last week we started this topic about uh, the successful Christian life. And we looked at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. And uh, we read it last Sunday, and uh, we looked also about the things that you have to do to be able to live a world or to have a successful world Christian life. And we say, number one, we must disciple others. And Timothy, and Paul was telling Timothy that I want you to carry on this work. So after I am gone, you will continue to preach the word of God to the ends of the earth. And uh, Timothy happened to be what the mentee of Paul. And we talked about last Sunday that for you to have a successful Christian life, we must live sacrificially. And Pastor always tell us that for you to be able to serve God effectively, you have to what, sacrifice not only your money, you know, your talents, your time. When you are called to do something in church, it should be a thing of joy. You are not, you're not called to come, and the next thing you are grumbling, and you are saying, I don't have a time. Now the question is, what do you do with your time? I want to tell you something. The time that you spend in serving God, trust me, it's not wasted. God has a way of making things work together for you when you put in your time to serve Him. And when people are saying that we don't have time, what we need here in this world, especially as students, is what speed and accuracy. And you know, you always interpret it that well, if I have time, I'll be able to, I will, I will get as much things that things done like I would have loved to. I don't have time, but trust me, the time that you spend in the house of God, the time you spend in, in, in preaching the word of God, the time you spend in doing the things of God, God will return, grant you speed, even a little time put into, into that into that research, into that work, God will speed up that, 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 that thing, and you find out that you have not really lost anything. So we've been encouraged to work, to spend, to, 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 to sacrifice our time, our talent, and above all, our money, and this is part of the things that will make it a what to have a successful world Christian life. This evening, we want to go further, and I want to talk about uh, uh, what other things you need to do to have a successful Christian life. Number, number, number three here, we must properly view death and eternity. We must have a proper view of what of death and what and eternity. And the Bible tells us in First Corinthians chapter 15, our read of the study. So the Bible says, if I fought white beasts, this is Paul talking now, the people of Corinthians, if I fought white beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised. Verse 33 says, those same verses, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we, tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good characters. And verse 34 says, come back to your senses as you ought, and stop, stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. You know, until we have a better view of life, of death and eternity, the way we live our lives will always be different. You know, some people say, yes, our life ends here on earth. Let us eat what we can eat. Let us drink what we can drink. Because yes, this way it ends. But I tell you something. The Bible said uh, there's a way that seemeth unto a man, but the end of this world is judgment. So we cannot live our life careless because we say, well, there is no God. Those are the Pharisees of the devil. Those are the, those are the the, 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 the falsehood that the kingdom of darkness is pushed to the, to the children of God. That yes, let us eat and drink. But trust me, as a Christian, if you want to have a successful life, live that life of, 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 of Christianhood, so to say, you need to understand that you cannot be careless with your life. So we we'll say, let's eat and drink. You'll say, no, I have a God. You are giving me an assignment that I have to live my life in a way that will please him. I have to go out there and, and be an ambassador for the kingdom. I 
God. So as Christians, we have been encouraged to what? To live a life. Some of us said that, that let us be what? Be ethically useful and resourceful while we are what? Heavenly conscious. So you have that death and eternity mentality in your life, but in your, in your head, or in your life, but, but you're here thinking, yes, I still have to be what? To be resourceful. That's why we go to school. That's why we get, we get this degree, because we want to be what? To be resourceful. And some time ago, somebody was preaching that there's a way God will align our what? Our careers, our ambitions to what? To his mission. So even as you are a PhD student, even though you are you're working in the factory, you're working as a lecturer, you're working as a machinist, you're working as a food scientist, God has a way of aligning your what? Your career with mission for your life. So that is a way that will make you to understand that yes, of a truth, we cannot live our lives carelessly because God has a mission for everyone. But it's in order to encourage us that we cannot live our life carelessly. Let us say, well, we don't care. No, we have to care because after this world, there's, there is eternity for us. And you want to be counted among those that God will say, yes. Go to the right hand side. You have done the will of the Father. That's my prayer for everyone this evening. That as we as we live our lives, we have that consciousness that what eternity is real. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number, number two for today, to have a successful Christian life, we must constantly battle. The life of a Christian is filled with what? With battles. Every day of our lives, there are battles to be fought. Just like I said, pick up your cross and what and follow me. That cross is the what is the battle. Every day there are challenges. There are things that will shape your very foundation as a Christian. But because you have a God that gives you strength, you have a God that gives you the ability. You are able to carry that cross and you follow God every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read the scripture now. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. The first verse says, I have competed well. You know, in, in a competition, you are trying to what? To, to, to overcome something. That's why you say you're what you're competing. You know, when you do the 100 meter dash or the 60 meter dash, it's because you what? You are competing. And you want to overcome what? You want to overcome the challenge of whatever is in front of you. That's why we say, as Christians, there is a what? There is a competition. That was says, Paul was telling Timothy, I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. So the love of a Christian is not what? Devoid of what? Of spiritual what? Struggle. And he said here that he has what? Competed well. And this can be translated to what? To, 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 to fight the what? The good fight. And the Greek word of fight is from the noun called what? Agon. And Agon is spelled A G O N. Agon. And it's English, that's where the word came from. And it means what? Agonizing. It means what? Agony. We are not saying that now the Christian is filled with agony, but we are saying that every and now a Christian, you need to understand that every day of your life there are challenges to what to overcome. Hallelujah. I'm not here to discover you this evening, but I'm getting your mind prepared that when the journey gets tough, you know that you have to keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so it, 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 the Christian race is not just for eating and what and drinking. There is a place for what? For, for keeping the faith. In the, I, I will believe that God has kept us here to keep that same faith, to fight. That's why I said three weeks ago that we have to be what? Good ambassadors of what? Of Christ. Because we'll be, we'll be kept here to what? To keep fighting. And, and Paul was telling the Christians and Corinthians that, listen, it's a continuous battle. It's not the one you fight today and tomorrow you say, yes, I'm just going to take a rest. I'm not done with this whole fight. No, it's a continuous fight. Every day, Christ said, pick up your cross and walk and follow me. So the journey is not easy. The journey is not easy. And this fight has to be what? Both physical and what? And, and spiritual. And the physical part could be what? Could be health. It could be finances. It could be careers. 
You go to work in the morning and the boss comes to you and says, I don't like you. And you're wondering, what, what did I do? That's a, that's a battle, right? That's a cross for the day. Hallelujah. But, what, but as Christians, we will not check in that. We'll go and say, God, can you please touch the heart of this man? I don't know what I did. So every day of our life, even in, 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 our, in, our, in our research work, you, you, you do a very nice work over the weekend, and you meet a person in the morning, and say, yes, I have something to show to you. I say, yes, this is rubbish. That, that, that's what, that's what you become cross. But the next thing you do is like, okay, sir, I'll go work on it. You go back, sit down, and say, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. So that's the cross for that day. So, so, so the battle that most this can work and spiritual. And, and, and the scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, and I'll read from here, it says, To keep away from fleshly desires that do battle against the soul. So believers are in a constant fight against different things. There's constant battle, a constant fight. There's fight against lust, against anger, against pride, and even against what? The spiritual world. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to keep fighting. So I said that for you to live a Christian, it's a Christian life, we must work continuously with battle. It's a continuous battle. It's like somebody running the race of the marathon race, it's continuously. You can't start off after one lap and tired. I said the Christian race is not a hundred meter dash, it's not a 60 meter dash, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. You keep you keep running, you fall down, you play yourself, you keep you. You keep running. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible was telling us something in, 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 in Galatians 5, verse 70 to 18. Galatians 5, verse 70 to 18. Paul was saying here that for the flesh desire which is contrary to the spirit and the spirit that is contrary to the flesh. Hallelujah. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So there's a continuous battle with between your flesh and your spirit. Somebody will say that I don't know if it's, it's scriptural, but I don't know that the, that the, that that, that the, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. It's a constant battle. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't know if, if any of you have this experience, you know, you are, uh, you are sitting in the lab and you want to walk. Your, 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 your mind wants to walk, but your body is like, just take a nap. Then you've been walking all morning. So the, even in our private life, you see the constant battle between our minds and our body, right? So, so Paul was saying here that, see, don't deceive yourself now. There is a constant battle between what? Your spirit and your flesh. So when the spirit is, is, is wanting to do something, like, like, like imagine you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to pray, pray in the morning before you go out. You know, your, your spirit wants to pray, but your friend says that, hey, listen, listen, it's everything you have to pray. You have to leave the house, you know, you have to get to work. There is, there is traffic in, on the road. If you don't get out at this time, you will go late. But your spirit will say, listen, 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 listen. You, you, I cannot leave my house in the morning until I've said a word of prayer. That is having a control over your, over your flesh. So there is, a, there, there, there is a lot of battle between your spirit and what and your flesh. And, and, and Paul was saying here that you have to understand this part. And he said, he said that, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So if God speaks upon your life, you will be able to subject those what fleshly desires. And Paul was saying here uh, in Proverbs 20, uh, not Paul, I mean to say, uh, in Proverbs 24, verse 16, saying that, that, that the righteousness falls down seven times and gets back up seven times. So even in the, in the battle of life, you keep falling and you keep getting up. And, 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 and historians or theologians have it that on Jesus Christ uh, away to the cross where he was killed, they said the fall. He fell down what, three times, and I, 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 after each fall, he would, he would speak of himself with a cross, and he would move on. So when Christ said that, pick up your cross and follow me, it means that as you're going, there are times that you will fall down. The fall is not the problem now, but it's the getting up that's the problem. Some Christians will fall down, and they fall down flat. And that will become the end of their life, the end of their ministry. But Christ is saying that, that listen, 
It's good to fall down, it's fine. But when you fall down, you pick up yourself and walk and keep moving. Because if Christ has fallen down the first time and stayed down, stayed there, there will be no hope for our salvation. But he fell down the first time, he got up. Second time, he got up. Third time, he got up. And he, until he got to, 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 to the cross of Calvary, he did not give up. Because there was a mission ahead of him. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's understand this now, that as Christians, we battle continuously. And, and it's allowed to what to fall down. When you fall down, you want to pick up yourself what and what keep what keep moving. And keep what keep moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and also, I, I, the, 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 the spiritual battle I've talked about here includes fighting against the world. Fighting against the world. But the Bible tells us in Romans 12, verse, verse 12, verse 7, of Romans, that, that do not be conformed to this present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, then the world has a system that attempts to what to consume its people. There are systems that have been designed for people to be consumed. Their desires are consumed. Entertainment is one part of it. Social media is another part of it. That has consumed what men and women. And no one is, is battling to get out of it. Somebody wants to go the you want to look at your and say, what messages you, you have? Hallelujah. That, that's, that's the battle. And I believe that as we hear my voice this evening, God will help us. Amen. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and also, let's understand that this spiritual battle also includes both fighting against demons and principalities. We have it in the Bible. Just went after a very wonderful time with God. 40 days in the wilderness. And he just came and first thing was, he called the devil. And the devil was tempted him. And I recorded it that those three conditions, God just like God passed through them. So don't, don't think you'll be different. So, so the thing is that the battle are also what against what the demons and what and principalities. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For our struggles is for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world realms. And the job of the evil one here is to what? Is to distract. The job of the evil one here is to what? Is to persecute and destroy. And the Bible tells us in the book of John that the, 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 chief, the chief mission of, 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 of devil is to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we cannot be ignorant of this. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, it says, In order that Satan might not attribute to us, for we, are, for, for we are not unaware of his scheme. That we should not live our life unaware of what of the schemes of the devil. You know, there, there, there's a way that they will package the thing. And the next one is like, yes, well, it doesn't really matter anyways. Uh, well, it's just one of those things. Everybody's doing it. It doesn't really matter. But trust me, those things, they matter. Hallelujah. There's a lot, a lot of things going on on, on, on our TVs. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot of how, you know, you know. I don't know if you guys have really paid attention to uh, to some TV programs. You know, I used to love this, uh, and there's this program that comes up uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on the TV after wrestling, Monday Night Raw. I like rest, I like a lot of wrestling. You know, yesterday was Sebastian, we had a nice time, but we couldn't really finish it because uh, we had a internet problem. But I like wrestling. But when the program comes up after Monday Night Raw, probably around, uh, I think, uh, uh, 11 o'clock, you know, it's some kind of, it's something about family. I stopped watching it because at some point we're projecting what uh, gay stuff, right? You have uh, uh, two men. You know, they, they, they were like they, they had this gay relationship, and they had to adopt a daughter. So I, I was like, wow! They, I, I, I was really not impressed with. But I, I loved it at some point. But when I saw that, I was talking so much. I was like, must you guys always project these things? So at every given opportunity, the world projects these things to cause what distraction, to cause what people's attention to be turned to these things. And the Bible said that we should not be unaware of these schemes. We should not be unaware. 
We should not be unaware. We should know that these are the things. You're just pushing it. Maybe that you won't see. You're watching a, a, normal, a normal advertisement on TV and you see something. You just spot it in like that and you won't even pay attention to it. And so now our children are there watching these things. And you say that, well, it's not it's, it's their life. No, it's not their life. These are the things that they will see and when they go out there, they will ask few questions. So, we have been encouraged here that we should not be what unaware of the word of the scheme of the devil. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and the Bible was telling us again here that for us to be able to fight this battle continuously, James was telling us in James 4 verse 7, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil and will flee from you. Until you open up yourself to God and let God fill you. Earlier on, I said I was singing a song about God's word, all limitedness. God's glory fills the entire earth. His powers are all limited. And I just was saying that submit yourself to God. Hey, hey, this battle will be difficult for you to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This evening, I decree upon that of somebody that you're receiving strength to fight the battles of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We've established that of the truth. There are battles. As you are there, you are facing one or the other. I have no battles. You have no battles. Let's not deceive ourselves now. But we are encouraged because what? We are Christians. And we have hope. As so I will get up every morning and we pray to God. We say, God, take over my life. And I was telling you, he's telling you that is what? Submit yourself to God. And once you've done that submission, then you can be able to what to resist the devil and he will what he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, 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 and Paul was saying in the scripture that, that the fight is what is continuous. And the Bible said that he fought. The very first day that he was combated, he fought up to the very end. Even in the face of danger, in the face of trials, Paul fought up to the end. And the next thing we talk about this evening is to have a spiritual Christian life, we must endure till the end. And I was saying here that for us to be able to become good Christians, let's have an understanding of what? Of death and eternity. Eternity is the end. Eternity is the end. And I'm saying here that, that we must endure the, the end. It's not all about how you start the race. You know, if you have a marathon race, it's not all about the person that stood in, that started the race and it was a, a mile ahead of everybody. No, it's the end that comes. And at some point, you become so tired and weak. And you say, go on and need your strength. And you are ability to endure to the end, that is where you are able to want to receive the crown that Paul was speaking about. When Paul said, I've completed the race, it's because he has got to what? To the finish line. You cannot be, you, you know, I don't know if you guys watch the race, this race now. Until you get that finish line, you, 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 you are not going to be able to the race. Even if you are, if you are one foot away from that line, Somebody that comes and runs across the line has won that race. Even though you fainted at one foot away from the line, you have not completed the work, the race. So this evening, we are encouraged. We are encouraged. It's going to be a long journey, but we believe God has given us the strength to prevail and to excel. And we believe that this race we will, not, we, will not, we will not die at the middle of it. We will get to the end of it. And we will say like Paul, I have what fought the good fight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I will believe that God has spoken to somebody this evening about how to live our lives as what? As successful Christians. And as you go for this week, I decree upon your life that every strength that you need to be able to live this life of a good Christian, God will grant unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. That every day of your life, you will see that the challenges that you're facing is just a step towards your next level.
It's a step towards greatness. It's a step towards testimony. And as we, as we fall every day, we will pick ourselves and keep moving. We will not give up. We will not give up. God will help us as we do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our God and Father, we thank you this evening. The word that I've come for to thank you, Lord, because we know you are preparing us, Lord, for eternity. And we know that because you're preparing us, we will not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we know that every day of our lives we have challenges. Lord, you will help us to overcome the challenges in the name of Jesus Christ. These challenges will not consume us, Lord, but we will overcome them. And on the other side, we say, Lord, Ebenezer, go you have helped us again. That will be our testimony every day of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen and amen. I believe that somebody has been blessed this evening. And we need to, to understand that this journey is long. But I believe that God will help us to keep moving and keep fighting until we get to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And by way of announcement, uh, let's not forget uh, tomorrow is the first day of the month. We want to celebrate God for bringing us to the end of July. And we've entered, we've already entered, by the grace of God now, uh, the, the, the month of August. And we believe God will take us through August and through the rest part of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. And don't forget um, our first and prayer program. The title of this month is Press On. And the text is Philippians chapter 3, verses 12. I will make provision that the, that the phone numbers that you can use to call in um, at 6 p.m. every day on the first, it's three days now, on the first, the second, and the third of the month. And I will be having that program in the last uh, a, a year plus, and God has been working miracles. It's, 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 it's not by Mr. Bahamas' programs now, and you want to be part of the blessing. So please, tomorrow by 6 p.m., I encourage us to join via the, the, the church line and come and pray and pray and pray and pray and God will help us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And also we'll be starting our Good Morning Jesus uh, uh, tomorrow and, and uh, the month of August we, we'll be out with my family. So by 7.30 in the morning, uh, it's a good way to pray and to start the day. So please, that same phone number that's meant for our, our prayer line it's what we'll be using for our Good Morning Jesus. Again, by 7.30 to 8 a.m. in the morning, as you go to work, you can just call in and you pray along with us. And uh, we do that for the month of August, and sometimes we take over in September. And we'll keep doing that uh, until, I mean, everything's up to Christ to decide when to end it. Uh, so um, I believe you'll join us tomorrow. Please, let's not forget, it's very important. 7.30 a.m. in the morning, to what? To 8 a.m. Let's set our alarms for that. And the next Sunday we'll still be here, you know, same place, uh, same time, uh, same same place, yeah, same venue. Yeah. So we'll be here next Sunday. And please let's try to talk to our friends to join us and come here and celebrate God and celebrate his goodness over our lives. And uh, we're about to bring the service to a, to a close. And we thank him for how far he has helped us. Uh, um, in, this, um, in this year, and we believe that uh, you continue to help us. Like I said, I said last Sunday, we already started preparing for our next uh, convention, and uh, it's going to be uh, on the uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th of July next year. Uh, we already started preparing. God will help us as we prepare the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's pray as we close. Our God and Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for your word and your comfort. What we need to do to have a successful Christian life. Lord, you will help us to carry on this battle. Lord, we will not give up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, as we go forth this week, we ask that our lives, Lord, will show forth your glory. And Lord, you will manifest your power through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we decree and we declare that this week, Lord, we will celebrate. This week, we will testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge will be having, Lord, before now. Lord, we ask in this week, Lord, Lord, your miracle will hit us in the name of Jesus Christ. I will come back next Sunday, Lord, 
who have a testimony to share with your people to the glory of your name and the show of the devil. Lord, do what no man can do in our lives, Lord, this week and take all the glory. Yeah? For in Jesus' name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.